Yo, Colleen, you there? Are you at home right now? Yeah, I'm here. Why do you ask? And besides, if you're home, you could always just, you know, talk to me in person. Why are you texting me? Because I figured you had started on one of your usual lectures if I talked to you in person. Looks like I was right. So anyway, where's my dinner? Uh, I didn't make any for you? You told me yourself this morning that you were going to be out late and didn't need any dinner. So yeah, I just made enough for myself. Oh my god, you are worthless. Newsflash, plans change sometimes, Colleen. Seriously? Only making enough for yourself? No leftovers? Not even a light snack for later? How selfish can you get? Why are you chewing me out by a text like this? And if you can chew me out by a text like this, couldn't you have texted me that your plans changed? If you could think of someone other than yourself for a change, I wouldn't need to text you at all. Harry, what has gotten into you lately? Why are you so angry at me? You never used to be like this. It's like you're a completely different person. I'm me. The same me as I've always been. And who the hell are you? Uh, whatever. I really don't feel like talking anymore about this right now. Oh, so you're gonna run away from me, huh? Is that what this relationship is to you? You think you can just walk away from your responsibilities to me whenever you feel like it? Look, it's clear that you're in a bad mood. I'm tired and I don't feel like getting into fight. I don't know if it's stress from work or you're not even feeling well or whatever, but let's just call it a night and we can talk again in the morning when we're both feeling better, okay? Yeah, sure. Fine. Whatever. I'm concerned about you though, okay? If there's something on your mind, I wish you would just come out and talk to me about it. And as for dinner? There's a bit of soup left over in the fridge and some fried chicken in the freezer. And if none of that sounds good, you can go to whatever restaurant you want and order a takeout. Yeah, I'll just do whatever. Hey mom, did you hear that? It sounded like dad just came home. Yeah, he did. He texted me asking me where his dinner was. That's weird. I remember him saying this morning that he'd be working late tonight and that he'd get something for himself. Yeah, and when I reminded him of that, he told me that good wives can somehow magically read their husbands' minds and know their plans changed or something to that effect. What is wrong with him? Seriously, who does he think he is? I swear he makes me so mad sometimes. It's okay, Sienna. Calm down. Remember, he's still your father, okay? You don't have to stand up for him like this, Mom. I'm on your side. What do you mean, Sienna? I know everything, Mom. Everything? I know why Dad is coming home late all the time. I know why he's been treating you so terribly lately. I know, Mom. Everything. I guess you're more observant than I gave you credit for. I'm sorry about all of this, Sienna. It's just, well, I figured that I could wait to deal with everything until you had graduated from high school, but I guess maybe I was wrong to do that. You don't need to worry about me, Mom. Besides, I already have a job lined up for me after I graduate. Not to mention, my graduation is only three months away. If there's anything at all I can help you out, Mom, I want to do it. Let me help you. Thank you, sweetheart. I guess if you would really mean that, then I have no reason to keep on bearing with this anymore, do I? None at all. Go get him, Mom. <laughs> all right. I'm going to have to give a good deal of thought as to what my next plan of action is, though. We'll talk more later. Hey, Dad. Are you there? Didn't you get a message from Mom just now? 
It's an emergency, Dad. You need to enter the phone. Mom was taken to the first district hospital in an ambulance. My high school graduation ceremony was today. Mom came, but I was talking to my friends, so she left ahead of me. When I got home, she was collapsed on the kitchen floor. She wasn't responding, so I called an ambulance to take her to the hospital. She still hasn't woken up. I know that you guys are heading toward a divorce, but as of now, you're still husband and wife, aren't you? So please, Dad, please. Please come to the first district hospital right away and see Mom. Sierra, listen to this. You'll never believe it. I just got the best news I've gotten probably my entire life. It's too good to be true. Get this. My wife just got hauled away to the hospital. Apparently she's totally unresponsive. But wait, it keeps getting better. She's been saying that she wouldn't agree to a divorce unless I pay her a massive settlement, right? Well... I just went home and looked through my wife's files, and guess what? I found the divorce agreement she'd been working on, and she already signed it! This is my chance. I can make a few edits, submit this to the courthouse, and BOOM! I'm divorced, on my terms, and we can get married. So, yeah, I'm gonna head over to the courthouse right now while my wife is still unconscious. And then tomorrow, you and me can head to the very same courthouse, say our vows, and be together forever! Gosh damn it. I'm sorry, Sierra. So it turned out the divorce agreement I found still needed my wife's signature in a few places. According to the clerk, any edits made after the document was printed needs to be signed and dated by both parties. And, of course, since my wife is currently a vegetable, she can't sign them. And if I tried to forge her signature, the clerk would probably get really suspicious. I'd hate for our marital bliss to be interrupted by some stupid forgery charge or whatever. So, I decided that it would be best to put off submitting the divorce papers for now. I'm really sorry, babe. Could you please just wait a little bit longer for me? Hey, Sierra. Are you there? You haven't responded to any of my messages for the last 10 days. Is something the matter? Man, I bet you're still upset about me getting your hopes up with the divorce agreement thing last week. I really screwed up, didn't I? I'm so sorry, Sierra. I should have talked to my lawyer before making any moves. He could have told me that any edits have to be signed. Then I wouldn't have wasted that trip out to the courthouse. But let's look at the bright side. My wife is still in a persistent vegetative state. Ha 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 ha! At this rate, I'll be able to pull the plug on our life support within a few weeks. And then when that happens, there'll be nothing keeping us apart. We can finally be together. Just the three of us. You, me, and the baby. Oh, I'm so excited. I can barely sleep at night. The baby? Hmm, that's interesting. Sierra, there you finally are. I've wanted to talk to you so bad. You're the absolute lowest form of life on the planet, Dad. Wait, Dad? You've been sending message after message, each one more disgustingly immoral than the last. What's going on? Who is this? If I recall correctly, your mistress is your 26-year-old secretary at your office. Sierra something or other, right, Dad? I guess you're either too careless or too stupid to tell the difference between an R and an N on your phone, huh? Get some reading glasses. You old geezer. Oh no. Sienna, this is your number? You just now noticed this? It's been weeks. Well, in my defense, your numbers are right next to each other in my contacts, so... Ugh, how could you be so stupid? Honestly, it's impressive how dense you are. And this wasn't even the first time. You've been sending me messages for her just about once a week for the last few years. Shoot, I did? Yeah, you moron. 
That's how I learned about your affair, you lying, backstabbing creep. Oh boy, this is bad. And other than the whole betraying your family part, the worst part is how cringeworthy your texts are. You're old, Dad. Stop trying to talk like a Gen Zer. Hey! That is no way to talk to your father, young lady. Oh, now you want to be my father? Now you want to be a family man? You heard that your wife of more than 20 years and the mother of your daughter was in a coma. And the first thing you do is send a celebratory message to your mistress? You're the most miserable excuse for a father I have ever heard of. Young lady, you will not talk to me that way. Don't young lady me, you philandering sack of cow manure. Hey! I said stop that! Anyway, if you're thinking about your future at all, you might want to reconsider whose side you're taking in this, Sienna. Exactly what is that supposed to mean? Think about it. What good is your mother to you? She works part-time. Now, if you stick with me, I can take care of you. You know I make a pretty decent salary, right? If you can convince a judge to give me custody of you, the potential benefits would be massive. Obviously, I'm not going to let you live with us, but I can put you up in a nice studio apartment in a good part of town. I'll pay your rent, utilities, all of that. You won't want for anything. So, what do you say, daughter? You know, you were right the other day. You really should pay more attention to your lawyer. I mean that since I'm 18, neither of you gets custody of me. I'm an adult, Dad. Didn't you realize that? Me, in fact. You can't get custody of me at all. And even if that wasn't the case, I've already got a job lined up for after I graduate, so I don't need you for anything. A job? And when I explained the situation between you and Mom to my company, they said they're gonna let her move with me into company housing rent-free. Wow. In other words, neither I nor Mom need your help of some creepy old geezer like you. Aren't you forgetting something? Your mother's in a coma, a persistent vegetative state. Even if she ever wakes up, which she probably won't, she's gonna need consistent care for the rest of her life. You'll be all on your own to support her. <laughs> Who told you she was in a persistent vegetative state? Not me. Mom was already awake, you oblivious buffoon. What? She is? I was understandably surprised to come home and find Mom unconscious on the floor, but she had just had a bit of an episode caused by stress. I guess she got dizzy, hit her head on something and fell down, so she ended up having to get a few stitches, but that's all. She had a CAT scan, and the results came back today, saying she's completely fine with no lingering negative effects from the fall. Now, she just needs to rest for a while. Oh, well, uh, that's great news. Now that she's awake, I can finally get her to sign the divorce papers. I'll be over there in a bit. Oh, and just so you don't go getting any ideas, if you come down here, there's no way you're getting into the room to see her. Why not? Whoa, you really think you're smooth, don't you? We know about your plan to edit the agreement. The courthouse clerk called Mom's lawyer about you trying to submit the agreement after making handwritten addition to it. Oh, come on. Why would she do that? Add another thing. You haven't heard from your mistress for the last few weeks or so, have you? Would you like to know why? Did you have something to do with this? What did you do? Tell me right now. Mom hired a private detective to keep tabs on your precious little Sierra, and guess what he found out? It turns out, your precious little Sierra wasn't just messing around with you. That can't be! You're lying! So after Mom's lawyer got the report from the private detective, she had a little chat with Sierra, and her parents agreed to foot the bill for her share of the settlement for your affair, but her parents only did so on the condition that she broke things off with you. This can't be happening. But wait, what about our baby? Sierra is six months pregnant. 
Ah, uh, yeah, about that. I'm not familiar with all the details, but... You might want to reconsider using the word our regarding that, baby. Huh? But that means... Let me think. What her words were? Something like, I thought I made it clear from the start of our fling that it was just that, a fling. I was just bored and wanted a little excitement. She said that? Once I got pregnant with my real boyfriend's baby, I told him I couldn't see him anymore and broke things off with him. So imagine my shock when he started talking about getting married to me all of a sudden. And now, his wife found out about it, so I have to pay damages? This is the worst. Not to mention, once my boyfriend found out about it, he dumped me. So now, thanks to that geezer, I'm stuck being a single mother. Just wonderful. I can give you the recording of that conversation if you want. It's pretty funny. No. No, 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 no! This can't be true! Tell me you're lying! Well, if I told you that, I'd be lying so. Oh, and by the way, I have a message from Mom. Is she gonna give me a second chance? I'll do anything! Anything! I mean it! I'll do better this time! I can change! It was a terrible mistake! I was a fool! From now on, all of our communications will go through my lawyer. I'll see you in court. And here's a message from me. After today, you will never speak to your daughter again for the rest of your life. Sienna, you can't do this to me. I'm your father. Not anymore. You're not. You're just some old geezer that I used to know. Goodbye. Oh, come on. You can at least be polite when you say goodbye to me. Maybe you should have thought about this potential this would happen when you were sneaking around with another woman around mom's back. I'm blocking your number now. I figured that even all of that still wouldn't get the point through my dad. So I called my uncle, his older brother, and explained what happened. A short while later, my uncle messaged me back and said he, quote, took care of him. Kind of spooky, but hey, problem solved. He tried to fight paying the settlement to mom, saying he was totally broke, but then mom's lawyer looked into his finances. He apparently had just enough to pay off his settlement, so that was all seized and paid out to my mom immediately. They also found that he'd withdrawn a large portion of mom and dad's mutual savings account, just before the divorce. So the judge ordered all of that to be paid back as well. Once that was finished, my parents' divorce was officially finalized. After I told my uncle about my dad trying to get out of paying the settlement, he messaged me back saying, looks like he needs another lesson. Should I stop telling my uncle things? Nah. His company found out about his escapades too, and promptly fired him. Having lost his family and his job, I wonder what he's gonna do now. Meh, it's not really any of my problem. A friend of mine said they saw him getting on a bus heading out of town. Maybe he'll try and start over. But at this age? <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> May, are you there? I want to know just what the heck you think you're doing, huh? I mean, really, what is the matter with you? How could you do this to your own sister? How could you sleep with your own sister's husband? What in the world drove you to do that? I was wondering when you were finally going to come to try and scold me like the old hag you are. But you can cry all you want. To me, it just sounds like the sobs of a sore loser. A sore loser? You can't be serious, right? How dare you call me that? You realize you're in the wrong here, don't you? Hm. Says you. Things seem to be going pretty well from where I'm standing. After all, Brian works for such a huge company and earns so much. Not to mention he's incredibly handsome. He was way too good for a fat, ugly, nobody like you. <laughs> Clearly Brian deserves to be with someone more on his level. Someone like me. I guess you could say that him and I were destined to be together. What? are you talking about? Are you seriously trying to tell me that your soulmate was my husband? Actually, 
That reminds me. Are you just reaching out to me because you finally got the divorce papers from Brian? Or because you heard that we were going to the courthouse to register ourselves as husband and wife? It was the divorce papers, if you must know, and when I couldn't get a hold of Brian, I knew that I had to call you to get to the bottom of this. Well, at least you know the truth. Brian and I are getting hitched! Isn't that amazing? I still can't believe that you're doing this. It's just horrible. How can you even live with yourself doing this to your own sister? Oh, please. Can't you just accept that this is over and done with? Anyways, hurry up and send off those divorce papers so we can get married. Thank you, sis. <laughs> Hey there, Trish! How have you been? Can you believe it's been five whole years since we've last talked? What have you been up to lately? <laughs> Are you still fat, ugly, and single? <laughs> Wait, is that really you, May? Wow, I was wondering when you were finally going to reach out to me again. But I should have known that you've barely even changed even after all this time. Excuse me? And just what? is that supposed to mean, huh? You know exactly what it means. Now why are you messaging me? What do you want? Whatever, I can let mean comments from a loser like you slide. Actually, I have some big news that I need to share with you. So, I guess we can just say that I'm being nice enough to ignore the snide remark that you made. I don't really care what you do about that comment at this point. Just tell me what you're messaging me about. So you really just want me to get straight to the point? No small talk or catching up after all this time? May, do you have something you want to talk to me about or not? Because if not, then I don't see the point in carrying on like this. <sighs> you really are no fun, you know that? Fine. If you must know, next week I'm going to be coming home with my daughter! Oh, wait, you're going to be coming with your daughter? I didn't even know that you had any children. Well, I do. And that means that I gave our parents their very first grandchild. So, what do you think of that? Well, how old is this daughter of yours? She's two years old, if you must know. Two years old? Is that really right? Of course it is. You think I don't know how old my daughter is? Anyways, the reason that I'm coming home is because Brian and I got a divorce and I don't have anywhere else to go now. So, I'm coming back home. Oh no, you mean that you two got a divorce? I thought that you were soulmates. Can you believe it? I thought that we were soulmates too. That damn Brian quit his big fancy job and then took something that paid way less. He said some dumb thing about wanting to follow his dreams and I know that that wasn't going to work out between us. Hold on a second. So you're telling me that you went to the trouble of stealing your own sister's husband and then ended it all over a career change? Sure, he might not have just become unemployed, but he took a job that paid so much less than what he used to get. I had no choice but to leave him, don't you see? And now you want to come crawling back home because you have nowhere else to go? I mean, that's a pretty nasty way of putting it, but the meaning is basically there. And you really think that you can just disappear from all of our lives for five years and then just show up like nothing happened? I think that when mom and dad see their favorite daughter come home with their first grandchild that they might give me a break. Hmm, well we'll just see about that, won't we? I suppose we will. Or rather, we would, but I have other plans. Namely... You're taking up too much space at mom and dad's house and all you're going to do is get in the way of me. So. I need you out! Sorry, you're trying to kick me out of the house. Do I understand that right? Of course! What use even is there of keeping around some divorced old hag like you, huh? Nobody needs or wants you. Why do you think Brian left you when he realized that your sister was far superior to you, huh? I don't even know what he saw in you to begin with. You know, I really don't think that you know what you're talking about right now at all. And just what is that supposed to mean? Do you know something that I don't? You could say that. For example, you aren't the one giving mom and dad their first grandchild. What are you talking about? How is my 
daughter not their first grandchild? Well, that would be because they already have a four-year-old grandson, I'm afraid. In fact, they have four other grandchildren in addition to him. Wait a second. You're telling me that you have five children? But that can't be right. I mean, you're such a fat, ugly cow. Who in the world would want to have kids with you? Sorry. I guess I should have made that clear. It isn't that all five of the kids are my children. What are you talking about them? Did you take in some strays off the street or something? <laughs> Is this supposed to be some kind of plan to get mom and dad to like you more than they like me? No, it's nothing like that, but as you know, we have a third sister, right? Well, a few years ago, she married someone she was going to college with, and they started spitting out kids like nothing. Hold on a second. You're telling me that Paula got married? Well, how many of the kids are hers, then? That's right. She got married, and her and her husband have three kids between the two of them now. Of course, she's the youngest of us, and we were all worried since she got pregnant her first year of college. But she stayed with her boyfriend, who's been really very supportive and responsible. As for me, I have a two-year-old daughter and an eight-month-old son, so altogether our parents already have five grandchildren. But, I mean, she's the youngest, but she gave our parents their first grandchildren. You have to be lying to me. I refuse to believe that you're telling me the truth. And how do you have two kids already? You're supposed to be alone forever. You are right that some men in this world would hold having gotten divorced against a woman, but there are plenty of understanding men out there as well. Besides, it isn't like I've just been some shut-in ever since the last time we talked. For example, I still have my same job that I did when you fled. But I don't get it. This wasn't how things were supposed to go. Anyways, I feel like we've gotten a little bit off topic. But what were you saying about wanting to move back in with your daughter? That's right. Even though I might not be bringing home mom and dad's first grandchild, I'm still their favorite daughter, and I know they'll love to have me come home. So, before I get there, I need you to move out of the house and make room for me. I don't care if you're there with your husband and kids. I want you all out. But I don't even live with mom and dad anymore. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Yeah, a few months ago we were moving out of there, and now we're all gone from the house. But that means that if you're gone, then I should just be able to move in without any issues, right? I just really don't know if there would still even be a room left for you there, though. What do you mean? If you and your family have all moved out, then there's got to be plenty of space for me there. Do you even know where Mom and Dad's house is? Of course I do! You really think that I don't have their address? <laughs> Did you really think I was going to let something like that stop me from what I was doing? Thanks for telling me that you're gone. You've made this whole thing so much easier for me. <laughs> Finally, tomorrow I can go home. Trish, are you there? What's going on? I don't understand. Where's the house? Why isn't the house where it's supposed to be? It's just a flat, empty lot now? Yeah, that sounds about right. Mom and Dad were doing their best to stay there and keep the house. But in the end, they decided that it would just be easier to sell the whole thing and downsize. So you're telling me that Mom and Dad sold their house and moved away? That's right. Although I don't really know about how much they sold it for or who they sold it to, but I guess whoever owns the property now had some reason to get rid of the house. But then again, it was getting quite old, and I don't even know how safe it was to be inside. But what about Mom and Dad? Where are they living now? What did they do after they moved? Well, I told you about how a few months ago my husband and I were getting ready to move out, right? That's right. You told me that you were all getting ready to move out of their house, but where did Mom and Dad go after that? I guess I should have been more clear. It wasn't just my family that was doing that. Mom and Dad moved out then as well. They applied for a waiting list at a retirement home and have been renting an apartment until an opening comes along. You mean that mom and dad are going to try and move into a retirement home? 
I mean, they aren't exactly spring chickens anymore, you know? So they're in a pretty small space for the time being so that they can save up their money for when they move into the home. That's why I said that I really don't think that there would even be a room for you if you did move there. But surely they must have some room for me. I mean, I'm their prettiest and favorite daughter, right? I really think that you're the only one who thinks of yourself in that way. Because I'm pretty sure that our parents actually all love us equally. No, that, that can't be true. How could you say something so awful? I mean, if anything, you're now their least favorite after how you stole my husband from me. In fact, you should know that they told me if you ever show up in our lives again trying to ask for help, that they would have no problem turning you down right away. But then, where am I supposed to go? Trish, are you there? I really need you right now, it's just terrible. What is it this time, May? What could you possibly want from me now? Are you really living in Brian's parents' house? What is going on? I want answers right now! What are you talking about? I seriously have no idea what you're going on about. I mean that after I learned about Mom and Dad's plans to move into a retirement home, I didn't have anywhere else to go. So then I tried going back to Brian's parents' place to try and patch things up with him. We were renting an apartment together before, but I know that he canceled the lease after we got divorced. So I thought that he might have gone back to live with his parents for the time being, but then when I got to his parents' house, I saw that your car was parked in their parking lot. Also, it wasn't even their house that was there anymore. Their house had been demolished and replaced with this really amazing looking mansion? Oh, that's what you're talking about. I guess that means that you were that sad-looking lady with her daughter that I saw staring from my window. How dare you call me that? Just tell me what's going on right this instant. I, I want answers! Right. I guess maybe I should have explained this to you the last time we talked. But the man that I got married to after you ran away was actually Brian's cousin. Wait, what? You married Brian's cousin? But hold on. Isn't Brian's cousin that genius entrepreneur who was on the cover of all those finance magazines? Yeah, actually, now that you mention it, I think that he has had a couple of interviews and photo shoots and stuff like that. But then that still doesn't explain how Brian's cousin ended up owning Brian's parents' house. How did that happen? Well, that happened about five years ago, actually, not long after you and Brian ran off with each other. Brian's mom was so shocked by what her son had done that she actually had to be hospitalized. Wait, really? Are you serious about that? Yep, I'm very serious about it. But I guess that you two were so caught up with what you were doing that you never heard about that happening. But anyways, Brian's parents just wanted a new start and got out of that house as soon as possible. So their nephew offered to buy their land for a good price so that they could get out right away. It wasn't long after that that we bumped into each other while running. Sparks flew and the rest is history, pretty much. He demolished the house and we built up a new one and... Here we are. But if his cousin bought the house from his parents, then what happened to Brian? I was sure that he would have gone back to live with his parents. Actually, now that you say that, Brian stopped by here just a couple of days ago. Hold on. Brian was here just a couple of days ago? Yeah, that's right. He, like you, thought that his parents' house would still be here waiting for him. But the only person who was home then was his cousin, who explained to him what happened. Of course, he didn't give Brian his parents' new address. After Brian realized he wasn't going to get anywhere with his cousin, he just wandered off dejectedly. Well, it would have been good to know all of this before I came all the way here. I guess so. It's not really my problem either way. If you want to try and get back together with Brian, that is completely up to you. Either way, I want you to leave me out of it and stay away from my house. My husband and I don't want anything to do with you or whatever you're scheming. But I don't have anywhere to go. You know that. Well, don't think that you can come to me asking for help, because I have nothing to say to you at all. Got it? But you're my sister. You can't do this to me. Please, you have to help me. We're supposed to be there for each other at times like these, right? Oh, please. When were you ever there for me? You literally disappeared from all of our lives for five years, and now you think you're entitled to our help? You have some nerve even thinking that that's an option for you. Just leave me alone. Trash, please don't do this to me! You're all I have left. 
You lost me a long time ago, May. Now just go away and leave me alone forever. After that, May ran up to my front door and started ringing the doorbell over and over again. She never stopped until I finally called the police on her and they told her to get off my property. After that, I never ever saw her again. Although according to some friends of friends who were still connected to my sister, she ended up moving in with some old friend, but she could never find Brian or anyone else to marry for that matter. I even heard that she ended up giving up her child for adoption since she could no longer take care of her. I never mentioned this to May, but Brian's parents actually ended up paying me off so that I wouldn't pursue their son for his infidelity. Not only that, but both May and Brian's parents ended up cutting them out of their wills. Although, I guess they have no way of knowing any of that now. Thank you for watching! If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this!